So today I'm going to look at a hair transplant case that went badly wrong. Um, the point is not to scare you with this. We're going to analyze it, we're going to unpick it, we're going to pick up all the things that went wrong so that your next hair transplant is a success. Let's have a go. Watching my hair implants, the best YouTube channel on all things hair transplant. My name is Jabro. What do you mean you still haven't subscribed? Make sure you stay all the way to the end because with this clinic, there were some obvious, obvious red flags that I want you to take notes and pay attention to so that you don't fall into the same trap. So let's kick things off with a little bit of background information. Uh, the client is a 26 year old male from the north of England. He's probably a Norwood 3. He's been losing hair since the age of 21 and now he's decided to do something about it. Uh, the operation was at a place called the Clinic Center in Turkey. It's not a clinic I've heard of before. Uh, we'll um, have a look at their website a little bit, a little bit later on. And uh, the cost was just over $1,200. That's probably about, I don't know, 1,400, um, sorry, 1,200 pounds English money, uh, which is about 1,400 US dollars. Actually, I have made a mistake. We have a picture of this guy before he had this procedure, and this is it. So he, it looks like he's just got frontal recession, especially in the corners. And um, he said he's been losing his hair for the last five years. So there's every chance this hair loss is actually progressing quite rapidly. We don't know. We also don't know how bad his crown is. So um, well, if I was this guy, I probably would have waited um, before having a hair transplant procedure. It's just far too young. And um, we don't know if his hair loss is stable or not. But anyway, let's talk about the operation itself. It was a six hour operation in December 2018. So fairly recent. It's unclear how many grafts he's had done. Uh, looking at looking at his um, hair loss, I wouldn't have thought it's many grafts, maybe just over a thousand grafts, but this is just a guess. And it was mostly frontal hairline work. Um, I didn't really see anything uh, that showed that he had work done on the crown itself. Now let's talk about the post-operation, what happened. So the client had his operation in December 2018 and at four months, um, he said he saw very sluggish growth. He contacted the clinic and they told him this is normal. And I agree, four months is usually way too early to panic and say that you're not getting any growth. And then the same happened at six months. So there was no improvement at six months. And then at one year when he saw very little improvements, he rightly complained to the clinic and demanded a refund. And his face was probably a bit like this guy, hacked off and angry. And uh, amazingly, he was offered by the clinic, instead of uh, giving him a full refund, they said, why don't we just give you a second procedure at half price? That is so ridiculous. That's a little bit like you going to a restaurant, having a dodgy meal, and then you get the runs afterwards, and then you complain to the restaurant, and then they say, uh, you know what, why don't you come back, eat with us again, but this time we'll give you the same food, but for half price. But let's have a quick look at his um, this gentleman's results. So this is him immediately after the uh, procedure, and uh, you can see most of his procedure was on the front. So I'm I'm guessing he had frontal recession. So that's why I kind of estimated it might be a normal three. And uh, I mean I can't really see anything obviously wrong from him, you know from this one picture because it's just so soon after the procedure. Obviously it's got a lot of redness. Let's have a look at uh, the donor donor area here. Um, so this is um, a little bit worrying because uh, they've gone really really high so they've ended up quite close to the crown which is something we usually avoid because you just don't know if this hair that you've just extracted is permanent hair but what we mean by that is that some people are bound to lose more hair that their baldness kind of extends all the way down say here so if this guy is one of them, that means the hair you've taken from this area here is non-permanent hair. That means it will be lost in the future and you have to have a second hair transplant. So they've gone quite high, um, which is maybe not the best thing to have done. Let's have a look at some growth pictures. So this is 14 months after he had the procedure. And as you can see, this is, um, to be honest, this is a terrible result because you can see this area here it looks like it's thinning. There's barely any growth here. So this is a really, really poor result for 14 months. I wanna show you some pictures of, um, of his donor area here after the procedure. And you can see how patchy this is. Clearly they've been over harvesting, uh, with, but you know, by that I mean, they've been taking more grafts than they should have been. 
and you can see here this area is really patchy but there's there's a bit more hair here there's a bit more hair here so even the way they've harvested is not consistent so this area they've really they've really dug out this area really badly and this area as well but this area seems to be okay and this area is kind of patchy again so the, the, the way they've harvested is bad enough on top of that they've actually over harvested leaving the guy with um, kind of patchy weird looking bold areas on the back of his head let's go through these red flags and there are so many of them um, the first one was the cost the cost he was offered was one sixth of the UK price so I think the UK in the UK they offered him uh, the same procedure the same number of graphs I'm assuming for 6,000 UK uh, sterling and uh, in Turkey they offered him for just over 1,000 now we know Turkey is a little bit cheaper than you know the UK and North America but there's a limit uh, this was just ridiculously cheap it was too cheap even by Turkey standards so this was a massive red flag so all these people saying what's the cheapest when I hear the word cheapest I know that person is heading for a disaster as I've always said if minimizing cost is your number one priority you should not be having a hair transplant so the clinic is called the clinic center in Istanbul when I typed into Google this um, website comes up so let's just visit this website and um, the first thing you notice is um, there's some alignment issues uh, at the top here um, so you know that doesn't really bode well and the website itself is really cluttered there's there's no there's no focus to it um, so you have trust pilot reviews and um, statements at the top and then how they how they lead the field and then you see all these different kind of treatments and you're thinking am I even you know on the right website so it's really cluttered and then we jump into results some of them are not even hair transplants and then you go back to the top and you go under treatment and then you realize that they, they, they don't just do hair transplants they do cosmetic surgery uh, a ton of cosmetic surgeries I mean I can't even go through the full list is so big and they do more non-surgical treatments so it's kind of all over the place and then when you go into the doctor's list um, you have a massive list and you're not really sure which one of these are the hair transplant specialists and which are the specialists in the other fields. Um, let's have a quick look at the hair transplant gallery. For the gallery they, they've been very helpful, they've separated out all the different galleries. So let's go into the hair transplant one and uh, what you see here is you kind of see this zoomed out a small thumbnail picture that you can't even click on so if I click on it nothing happens so you have no idea if you know how many graphs this person had you have no idea um, you know the cost uh, just just no information no basic information so that wasn't really terribly helpful and you also notice some of the results are a little bit dodgy themselves maybe his donor area was really weak but his final result is quite thin and uh, there was another one here yeah this one here um, he looks like you can't really tell because the photo is so small uh, but it looks like he had a decent donor area but then he kind of ended up with this patchy result this one as well isn't kind of isn't looking the, you know isn't looking the best so some of the results are actually quite dodgy even though they're kind of really small pictures but to their credit their contact us page is very very useful so they have a form here they have a map so that you can tell where they are they have offices um, they're different offices um, so that's really good but I would say overall um, if I had to come on this website this would never have made through my initial check because I would have been really concerned by the state of this website um, if somebody asked me to research this clinic so it wouldn't have even made it through the you know initial stage which is why I always say you need to do thorough research starting with the website and going all the way through the forums going all the way through before after pictures don't just go into the before and after pictures to assess if a clinic is good or not that is a recipe for disaster the second red flag should have been the reviews and the client this particular client said he looked at that's that should say looked not look um, he looked at only the trust pilot reviews from what he said from the, what the article said and uh, that itself has many red flags and I'm going to show you that in a minute but there was also the fact that there, there's no Google reviews for this particular clinic so we've got lots of Trustpilot reviews and no Google, no Google reviews and we know Google reviews in my opinion are more reliable but the Trustpilot reviews are themselves a red flag and I'm going to show you the reason why now 
here we are. We are at the um, Clinic Center's Tr Trust Pilot page, and um, it looks good. I can see why the client in this case looked at this page and thought, you know, this is an excellent company. They have over 866, 860 review, sorry, 866 reviews. Um, the rating is four, four stars out of five. It's excellent. They've been on Trustpilot since 2016. They've got a 74, 76% excellent rating and only 6% uh, bad rating. Uh, but then you need to really dig into the reviews themselves and then you realize what the problem is. So this is a hair transplant that's fine. This is another hair transplant that's fine. But if you scroll down, um, you will see a few odd things pop up. So here we go. Uh, this is a lady reviewing the clinic and uh, it's quite odd because uh, we know tra hair transplants at the moment are kind of 99% men. We don't really expect to see any ladies reviewing uh, hair transplant clinics yet. But remember the clinic, they don't just do hair transplants, they do other procedures, plastic surgery and all that kind of stuff. So this lady must have had some sort of non-hair transplant work done, maybe. So let's carry on. There, here's another lady reviewing the clinic. She had lower face and neck lift. So nothing to do with hair transplant. So, and obviously this is affecting the ratings. Here's another lady uh, reviewing the clinic. She doesn't really say what procedure she, she had, but we can, I don't know, we can safely assume that it's probably not hair transplant. And as you scroll down in both the excellent categories and the average and the bad, you'll constantly see people mentioning different procedures. So all the procedures here are mixed. It doesn't really give you a, a you know, kind of a precise reflection of what the hair transplant experience is. You will have to personally go through every single one and rate it and collect it and add it, add it up yourself, which you know, no one is going to do that. Another massive red flag was advertising. So the client in the article said that the clinic was advertising the price. Now I'm assuming this means that he was maybe on his social media and he saw an advert served to him. Hey, we can do a hair transplant for 1000 UK pounds. Now, if, if they were advertising, and I'm not 100% sure, I have to say this, but if they were advertising a specific price, and this is the clear indication from what the client said, this is a complete and utter red flag. There's no way you can advertise a hair transplant for a specific price because you have no idea how, you know, what graphs, how many graphs the client needs. You have no idea about their situation, their, their background. So advertising a specific price from any, any clinic, just stay clear of that clinic. Don't even look into it another second. The way to avoid having a similar fate as this client is to do something called deep research. I've explained it before on my channel. If you want me to do deep research for you, if you have some clinics in mind, just comment below and I'll get back to you. I'm off to make another espresso. Take care, see you soon.